Before proving the fundamental theorem of arithmetic, we have to first prove a few results regarding prime numbers. So first, let a and b be integers, and p be a prime number. If p divides a times b, then p divides a or p divides b. To prove this result, suppose p divides a times b. It suffices to show that if p does not divide a, then p divides b. So assume p does not divide a. Since p is prime, the HCF of a and p is either one or p. But we know that the HCF of a and p is not equal to p, since otherwise, p is the HCF of a and p, which divides a. So the HCF of a and p is one. Now we have p divides a times b, and the HCF of a and p is one. From a result in the second video, we have that p divides b, which completes the proof. The second proposition that we need to prove is a generalization of the first one. We let a1, a2 up to an be integers, and p be a prime number. If p divides the product of a1, a2 up to an, then p divides a i for some i in the set 1 to n. We prove the result using mathematical induction. The base case, where n equals 1, states that if p divides a1, then p divides a1, which is trivially true. Assume inductively that for a1, a2 up to ak, which are integers, if p1 divides the product of a1, a2 up to ak, then p divides a i for some i in the set 1 to k. Let's call this star. Now suppose that a1, a2 up to ak plus 1 are integers, and p divides the product of a1, a2 up to ak plus 1. We can write a equals a1 times a2 up to ak, and b equals ak plus 1. Then, using the first proposition, p divides a times b implies that p divides a, or p divides b. If p divides a, then p divides a1 times a2 up to ak, which implies that p divides a i for some i in the set 1 to k, using star. If p divides b, then p divides a k plus 1. In either case, p divides a i for some i in the set 1 to k plus 1. So the inductive case is complete. Now we can talk about the fundamental theorem of arithmetic, which states that every positive integer n which is greater than 1 can be written uniquely as n equals p1 times p2 up to pk, where p1 up to pk are primes, and p1, p2 up to pk are arranged in ascending order. In other words, every positive integer n where n is greater than 1 can be factorized uniquely as a product of prime numbers. Note that the existence of such factorization is proved in a previous video. For the uniqueness, suppose that n has two different prime factorizations, say p1, p2 up to pk, and q1, q2 up to ql. Let's call this star. Where the p1 up to pk are arranged in ascending order, so are the numbers q1, q2 up to ql. And also, the set p1 up to pk is not equal to the set q1 up to ql. That just means that the primes in the two factorizations are not all the same. In star, we can cancel any primes that are common in both sides. Since the two factorizations are different, not all primes cancel, so star reduces to the form r1 up to ra, which equals s1 up to sb, where each ri is in a set p1 up to pk, and each sj is in a set q1 up to ql. Also, ri is not equal to sj for all i and j, because we have cancelled all the primes that are equal. Now, r1 divides the right-hand side, that is, s1 up to sb. So r1 divides sj 
for some j in the set 1 to b, using the second proposition. But as j is prime, in other words, the only divisors of S j is 1 and itself. So R1, which is prime, must not be equal to 1, so it must be equal to S j, which is a contradiction, because we have assumed that none of the R i's are equal to any of the S j's. This completes the proof. Finally, we prove the result that there are infinitely many primes, by applying the fundamental theorem of arithmetic. We proceed by contradiction and assume that the set S of all primes is finite, so we can write S equals P1, P2 up to Pn, where n is the finite size of S. Let n equals P1 times P2 up to Pn plus 1. Since n is greater than 1, by the fundamental theorem of arithmetic, there exists a prime number p, such that p divides n, so n equals k times p for some integer k. Since p is prime, it belongs to the set S, so it must be equal to pi for some i. Now, we write 1 equals n minus p1 times p2 up to pn, which equals k times p minus p1 times p2 up to pi minus 1, pi, pi plus 1, up to pn. Since p equals pi, we can take out the common factor pi to get k minus p1, p2, up to pi minus 1, pi plus 1, up to pn, times pi. This implies that pi divides 1, which is a contradiction. So indeed, the set of all primes is infinite.